hi everyone welcome back so in this clip we want to talk about why we want to separate base flow so let's get started so let me just draw a simple figure here first so I'm drawing a hydrograph but this hydrograph is going to look very different than what you have seen before okay so what you see on this plot is not a hydrograph resulting from any storm event what you see here is just water flowing through the stream due to base flow or due to groundwater flow so there is no rainfall here and this plot we usually call this as recession curve okay so we are going to use this term recession curve uh, when we talk about base flow separation later so that's why i wanted you to know that when there is no water in the stream due to any surface runoff or any storm event the water flowing through the stream is mainly due to groundwater contribution or base flow and this usually follows uh, a pattern that you see here and we call it recession curve and in our HMS lab, we are going to see how this can be simulated in HMS. So usually the equation that we use to describe this recession curve is Q at any given point is a function of some initial discharge K to the power of T. And we'll come back to this equation later. So right now, just remember that when there is no surface runoff the curve that you see a hydrograph is a recession curve so that so in this case we don't need to separate base flow everything that we see here is base flow okay so now let's look at another simple example so in this case we do have rainfall so let me use this black pen here okay and let's say this total amount of rainfall from this is five centimeter and then the area of the watershed let's say 100 kilometer square okay now this rainfall is going to create a storm hydrograph and in this case let's assume there was no base flow okay so all we have is this hydrograph and to keep things simple let's assume that there was no loss okay which means all the water that came from this rainfall did enter the stream and we got this hydrograph so if i calculate the total volume of this water so volume of rainfall so five centimeter that's five divided by hundred i converted that into meter and then we have hundred kilometer square which is so that's so five meter cube of water okay now if i calculate the volume under this curve and that volume will also be if this is an ideal system nothing got lost so the volume of that should also come to to 5 million cubic meter so there was no loss so the the idea of this hypothetical example is to show you that we are able to quantify how much direct runoff we got because we know how much rainfall we got we can measure rainfall and then if you calculate the volume under this direct runoff hydrograph that volume should match again this is a hypothetical situation we are assuming that nothing got lost so again in this case 
we don't have to worry about base flow because nothing was coming before the storm started and nothing got infiltrated into the soil so again simple example there is no need to separate base flow okay now let's think of another example here so maybe same let's continue with the same rainfall event now in this case we are going to assume that there was some loss okay so this much green area that I'm showing you here on the rainfall hydrograph got lost and I'm also going to assume that before the rainfall started there was some base flow okay so this is the base flow before the rainfall started and as soon as the direct runoff start we see the peak then we go back like this so remember this part here and this part here is our recession curve that i show you before when there is no direct runoff okay so at the stream we are able to measure this hydrograph and we know that we this is how it looks now we know we got a five centimeter total rainfall but we did not know how much rainfall was lost now you can say that well we can calculate infiltration yes we can calculate but again that's going to give us some estimate it will not give us the exact amount of rainfall that got lost so one reason why would why we would like to separate base flow is to calculate the loss that we have in from this rainfall event so we we can measure stream flow as we saw in one of our previous clips um, so in this case this is what we have measured now if we are able to separate the direct runoff from this total stream flow hydrograph we can calculate the volume of the direct runoff convert that volume to depth and that will give us how much water from this rainfall became direct runoff okay so let's say we assume this is our base flow and in our next clip you are going to learn different techniques for separating base flow so we separate base flow and then we calculate the volume of our direct runoff Now let's say this volume comes to be, I'm going to say again, this, these are all hypothetical numbers. So that's 4 million cubic meter. Now if I divide it by area, I will get the depth of direct runoff. And again, by using the same math, that depth will come to 4 centimeter. So from this, I know that out of the five centimeter rainfall, we got only four centimeter as direct runoff, which means the loss was one centimeter. So the green area that you see here, that was one centimeter lost due to infiltration. And now we can match the, the volume of direct runoff that we got from this storm event as to the rainfall hydrograph and then we can say that our excess rainfall is also 4 cm so remember the excess rainfall is always equal to the amount of direct runoff that we get at the stream so the reasons for separating base flow first we would like to know how much water enter the stream as surface direct runoff that will give give us an idea of how much water we got lost and all these information are useful in hydrologic design so that's one reason so for hydrologic design you we want to know how much was the surface water component and for others who are interested in how much water the groundwater is contributing in that case you want to know how much groundwater we got 
in this in the stream flow hydrograph so to do that you need to draw this separation line now there are different ways of drawing this separation line and in our next clip we are going to look at the different methods that we can use to separate base flow from a total stream flow hydrograph so the idea of this clip was to just describe some of the terms that we are going to use later uh, so the recession curve and why we need to separate base flow from the total stream flow hydrograph the another term that i want you to know from this clip is the inflection point okay so i'm going to draw so let's say we have a rainfall event okay so before the rainfall this is our recession curve so this is the base flow and after the rainfall started this is when the direct runoff begins so right now i'm just plotting the direct runoff now as the water from the surface is entering in the stream there is also contribution from base flow so this will initially follow this line and after some point when you have a lot of subsurface flow taking place so this is going to rise and this may be something like this okay so let me change the color of our surface or direct runoff component to blue and the base flow component to green and when i add these two i will get this red sort of like this something like this or maybe higher here something like that now i want you to focus at this point so at this point what happened was the contribution from the subsurface flow or base flow became larger than the contribution from the direct surface runoff and that's why you see a change of slope on this um, falling limb and this point is usually called the inflection point and we are going to use this term inflection point when we are going to talk about the base flow separation methods in our next clips so from this clip all i wanted you all i wanted you to know was why we need to separate base flow what is a recession curve and what is an inflection point so i hope you got those if not as always feel free to email me and in the next clip we are going to look at base flow separation methods so with that i'll stop here and i'll see you soon thank you bye